Hey everyone, welcome to this special holiday episode of What The List, the game show where you can get every answer right and still lose. All right, let's check out the rules. Ho, ho, ho. The aim of the game is not only to answer questions, but also to guess what the list. Each category is represented by a Mystery Watch Mojo Top 10 list, and each answer in a category is an entry on that list. For every question you answer correctly, you get one point. If you get it wrong, your opponent will have the chance to steal for double points. At the end of each round, you can attempt to name the Watch Mojo Top 10 list. A correct guess nabs you 10 points. Get it wrong, and it's a strike. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins, but whoever has the most strikes gets to embarrass themselves on the internet. All right, let's play What the List. Here are our contestants for today. Uh, 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 how, how, how much time do I have? Look, I've swept it. Oh, what the heck? This is what this game should be called. So for today's contestants, we have our returning champ, John, and a special elf here to compete with him, Fernando. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, Fernando. Are you ready to not win? <laughs> I am ready to make you a loser. That's what I'm ready to do. Okay, I was just I was just checking your intention, and I feel good about it. Right. I feel good. I feel good with your threats. Okay. Good. Let's I'm see glad how we you got feel that later. out of the way. Yeah, it's, you know, it's very, po it's very. You have to be very positive when a man wearing fake ears is being rude to you. <laughs> All right. Well, Fernando, you won the coin toss backstage. So that means you have the opportunity to choose your choice of film or TV. What's your choice? I'm going to choose film. Okay, perfect. Are you ready to play your first episode of What the List? I am so ready. Let's do this. Okay, perfect. Great. All right. So uh, just so you know, this list was first published on May 10th, 2014. Number 10 on mystery film category. An actor from Elf and Game of Thrones appeared in this 2007 British ensemble comedy, as well as its more diverse 2010 US remake. I'm gonna have to, no, I, I don't know the answer. You know what? People around the world probably are gonna wanna kill me, but it's just, I've never seen Elf. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to respond to that. What do you watch a Christmas after Die Hard? That's the question. What do you watch a Christmas after Die Hard? Um, Die Hard 2. Also a Christmas movie. John, are you interested in stealing? I certainly am. I believe the film is called Death at a Funeral. Death at a Funeral. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. The actor is Peter Dinklage. That is also correct. But we were looking for the yes. name of the movie, but you got both. Yeah, I was trying to figure out the Game of Thrones character, and then you said... U.S. remake, and I was like, oh, I've seen both. They're both great. Okay, nine, Fernando. Fans of this drug-fueled Scotland set film must have considered it a belated Christmas present when its sequel was finally released 21 years after the original. Oh, my goodness. Um, I don't think, okay, I'm going to just guess. I don't know if he has a sequel or not, but just Scotland drug-fueled um, train spotting. Is that what we're going with? I'm going to have to say yes. You are correct. Mm. <laughs> All right. Ready to keep going? Ready. All right. You're not going to get this one. Uh, centered, on, <laughs> sorry, sorry. centered on a couple that meets at a funeral where the female is significantly older than the male. This classic love story's moral is that life is the most precious gift of all. I'm trying to think where it's just the female is singly, significantly older than the male. <sighs> uh, no, you were right. I am not going to get it. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't want to psych you out, but John, are you interested in the seal? I think I am. I'm not sure if this is right, but I'm going to guess it's Harold and Maud because there's only one movie about a young man falling in love with an old woman. I think you're right. I yeah, think you're it's right. Harold and yeah, Mudd. Yeah, 
Fernando, are you ready to keep going? As ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay. I wonder if Rebecca's going to say, and this is another one you won't get. <laughs> I think you'll get this one. I was just going to say, I think you might get this one. Number seven, Bill Murray, Jack Nicholson, and James Gandolfini were all considered to play a boozy version of a holiday icon in this movie. The role ultimately went to the writer, director, star of Sling Blade. Sling Blade? Sling Blade. <laughs> but I, I'm thinking that the answer for this is Bad Santa. That's what you're going with? Yes, I am. You are correct. Yes. yes. All right, number six. This question is convoluted. I'm just going to warn you. <laughs> This R-rated 1989 teen movie about high school cliques features an actor whose given name also refers to followers of Jesus. However, he is not one of the characters the film is named for. Oh my <laughs> God. This next category involves a film that could be named after a prophet if you did believe in an Abrahamic religion, but if you're more of into the Eastern mysticism, you might remember the time he lost it in the middle 90s if we're referring to a man, which we might be. <laughs> so, like, why don't you break that question down? Like, what is that question? Like, try to, try to talk it out. Yeah, the thing is that I'm trying to think because I like teen movies about high school cliques. I'm trying to think of the year. I was very young in 1989, but I'm getting throw off for, uh, with the rest of the, the followers of Jesus. Christians, Christina. That's a name. <laughs> Christina, I don't know. <sighs> I'm gonna say Christian. But that, that's the name of the movie? That's what we're going with? I would have to pass because so, I'm sorry. I just don't. I, I don't know. I, I don't. All right. That's all good. John, are you interested in the steel? Are you yes, able to show your Heathers. work on this? Oh, my God. No, no. What do you mean? No. What does Heathers has, ha, have to do with followers of Jesus? It stars Christian Slater. Okay. Fine. Anyway, the score is six to two. Fernando, let's keep going. Number five. On the seventh day of Christmas, Sam Rockwell gave to me a dog-centric crime comedy. On the seventh day of Christmas, <laughs> a dog-centric crime comedy. Sam Rockwell. Who's Sam Rockwell? Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Seven dogs. That's who you're going with? Yes. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, no. John, are you interested in the steel? I am not. I don't really? know that movie. That's a. That's All right. a. All right. Yeah. Sam Rockwell. Dog crime. So I will tell you. I will tell you at the end of the round after you have guessed what the list. Okay. So let's move on to number four. Another Sheffy. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Rabbit cookie. <laughs> the holidays are about love and family. So is this Danny DeVito directed movie. Only it focuses on a bitter divorce between Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner. Kathleen Turner and Michael Douglas. Um, no, no, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't, I, <clears throat> like <clears throat> nothing even is, no, no. John, it's to you now. I can't. I have no idea. Michael Douglas, Kathleen yeah. Turner? They've done many movies together, actually. Yeah, they're, they're romancing the Stone series. But I don't know the two people getting divorced by Danny DeVito. Like, terrible people? Dirty people? Like, they kidnap someone with Do Donald Duck masks? I remember this poster, but I can't remember what the movie's called. I don't actually know if it's the movie you're thinking of. Because I don't remember that. I mean, there may be a different. I think it's a different movie then. So the answer is I don't know. Nor do I want to know. No one wants to know right, the answer to this I will question. Tell you then. Let's keep going. Number three, Fernando. Though we're more used to seeing a certain actor crawling through air vents and fighting German terrorists this time of year, in this 1994 film, he fights a gangster and a villain referred to as the Gimp. Are you joking? Like, what are these questions and these movies? No, you know this one. You've got to know this one. 
is, is, is it a sequel? Because I know who we're talking about. I know I know who the actor is, but Christian Slater. No, no, no. <laughs> It's just the gimp is throwing me off because I do not remember any gangster villain called or reference as the gimp. What, any, first of all, what, what's a gimp? Do not answer that question, Rebecca. That will help <laughs> so much. I'm going to go with Die Hard, even though I know it's not. All right. It is not. The, a the answer to the question is uh, bring out the gimp. It's Pulp Fiction. Is the answer to the question? It's Pulp Fiction. Okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like not believe me that Bruce Willis is in Pulp Fiction, or <laughs> have you seen Pulp Fiction? I think the answer yes. would more be: It's yeah. would it be classified as a gangster movie or a crime movie? Well, then I don't Bring know when the last time you saw the movie is, but it's very memorable. <laughs> yeah, because that. Yeah, that 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 really sticks with you. That portion of the film. I, that's why I thought it gave away. All right, let's move it on. You're gonna hate this one. But anyway, oh. number two. Although it is definitely not a Christmas movie, this Oscar-winning Minnesota <laughs> set 1996 crime dramedy does feature a lot of snow, as well as an appearance from Feliz Navidad singer Jose Feliciano. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I should know this. I really should know this. I'll just say, when I found out Jose Feliciano was in this movie, I was very excited to make this Christmas themed. An appearance by Jose Feliciano. I have no idea where Jose Feliciano ever appeared on a movie, so... I wouldn't focus on that part. <laughs> Why should I focus on? They literally, <laughs> like, I basically gave you the name of the movie. I would focus on this Oscar-winning Minnesota set 1996 crime dramedy. Oh my God. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. John? It's Fargo. <laughs> Could you, other clues. I know this movie, but other clues like Jose Feliciano in Fargo. I, like, yeah, I've, is, that Jose Feliciano, like, I just remember it was from 96 because it's one of the best years for movies ever. And that is such a weird <laughs> hint. I think it's, he's like, he's like playing at a, I think like a strip club. All right. Number one on mystery film list, let's do it. 20 years after the release of this bizarre Cold War comedy, one of its lead actors took on the role of Ebenezer Scrooge in a made-for-TV film. I believe in you. <laughs> I'm just gonna say Scrooge. Fernando. No, I mean, Scrooge is not even Christmas. Uh... No, I, I don't know, and nothing is coming up to mind to say anything. All right, John. And it's the made-for-TV film no. is what you're looking this for. This cold, bizarre Cold War comedy is what I'm looking for. Then I'm going to go with Dr. Strangelove. I'm just randomly... I can't think of another Cold War comedy that Pretty besides much. Dr. Strangelove. And it is strange, which is bizarre. So that is correct. Fernando, at the end of the round, you have eight on the board. Do you see any connective tissue between these entries? No, I, I really don't. I re... I, 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 I don't see correlation, so I cannot come with anything that would make sense. Nope. Well, unfortunately, that means it's a strike. John, do you see any connective tissue here to steal Fernando's 10 points? I don't see that much. I see some connective tissue. I'm not 100% sure on my guess. Hi, uh, welcome, to wa welcome to Watch Mojo. I'm John Hastings, and here are uh, top 10 movies um, that center around a funeral or that take, like, they're like inciting incident is all death. Inciting incident is a funeral. Is my one is my one guess. The other one I think may have actually been the answer, but I'm gonna go with that one. Nope. Sorry. What is it then? It Let's is top ten dark comedy movies. Comedy. Uh, okay, so the ones yeah, so the ones that uh, we missed are on the seventh day of Lord, Christmas. Oh, Sam Rockwell gave to me a dog centric crime comedy. That is seven psychopaths. Yeah, what was that? Oh yeah. Oh, that's... F and then, that's fun. for number four, the holidays are about love and family. So is this Danny DeVito-directed movie, only it focuses on a bitter divorce between Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner. That is The War of the Roses. All right, so the score right now is 12 for John and 2 for Fernando, and you've both got a strike on the board, meaning 
I do not have to reveal any embarrassing stories today. Thank goodness. All right, let's go on to round number two. I just wanted to tell you, before we get into our second round, that next episode will be a tournament of champions of sorts where I will be competing against our all-time champion, Stephanie, uh, to see if I can compete on this crazy game show we call What The List. So that should My be fun. God. Definitely tune in for that one. It's, uh, it's gonna be interesting, I'll just say that. Anyway, let's get into it. So, John, this is your round. It is mystery television category. Woo! Are you ready to play What The List? Yes, I, I okay. am list. <laughs> okay. All right, number 10. This character, who walks with a cane and owns a Jack Russell Terrier named Eddie, was often I, at I odds answer, with- I, I can answer it right now, I know who it is. <laughs> with his radio psychiatrist son during Christmas because of their differing decorating styles. The John. character is uh, Martin Crane. Martin Crane wanted to decorate the uh, apartment at El the Elliott Bay Towers quite garishly, while oh, Fraser gosh. Crane, his son, felt it was inappropriate. <laughs> I think that means you are correct. <laughs> All right. On to number nine. Played by an actor from Platoon and Office Space, this sarcastic doctor once recruited a newbie intern to tape the birth of his friend's child during the holidays. That would be Dr. Cox from Scrubs. Correct. Okay, anyway, number eight. Although he acts like he doesn't care, this underwater clarinet playing cashier once dressed as Santa Claus to cheer up his neighbors for Christmas. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Fernando, are you interested in the steal? Am I interested? Yes. Do I know the answer? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, we can leave that one blank. Number seven. This elderly sitcom character who lived in the same building as many of the show's protagonists and died suddenly while banging his broom on the ceiling was played by an actor who appeared as a cop in Home Alone. I mean, great Christmas connection. It's Mr. Heckles from Friends is who it is. Correct. All right, number six, score of 15 to two, one Christmas. This politically incorrect family patriarch invited a friend who lost his son in Vietnam. Awkwardly, his meathead son-in-law also invited a draft dodger. Maybe they should have kept the celebrations all in the family. Mm -hmm. I wonder who it could be. Well, I know. <laughs> I'm a bit confused. I maybe have to ask their, neighbors, their neighbor, George Jefferson because the answer is Archie Bunker from All in the Family. Correct. Yeah, you had me at died in Vietnam because there's only one sitcom that would feature that plot point. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, let's move on to number five. Known for solving medical mysteries, this brilliant doctor was partly inspired by Sherlock Holmes and ironically received a second edition Arthur Conan Doyle for Christmas one year. Uh, house? It is house. I'm going to guess house. It is house. Fernando looks disgusted. <laughs> Sorry. Disgusted. I'm disgusted <laughs> of myself. Number four, mystery TV list. This shoe salesman and married man with children once said, Christmas is not the time Al for Bundy. regrets. That's uh, what anniversaries shoe are salesman. for. And he's also married with children. Yeah. Uh, then yeah. Then marriage. All right. This okay. Here's where we might actually. Uh, yeah. Here's well, where we might uh, affect your opinion point? of what this list is. Before he was played by Jim Carrey and Benedict Cumberbatch, this green character was voiced by Frankenstein himself, Boris Karloff. Although his theme song was Great sung by Great fact Tony the about Tiger. the Grinch. Correct. I mean, it could be bathrobe. So, it could definitely be it's not white guys. <laughs> Number two, originally sharing the same voice actor as a giant canary, this puppet loves trash but hates Christmas, a sentiment he has expressed through song. 
I mean, I guess it's going to be uh, uh, Oscar the Grouch, but I don't. Uh, that's just a random guess. Yes. <laughs> Number one, mystery television category. In the 70s, this no-nonsense war veteran was miscast as Santa by his cheerful wife, who reminds I'm him really not to call one. any of the children dumbass. Go ahead, Fernando. Get on the oh. board, baby. Come on. Let's get cool. Yeah. Welcome to Watch Mojo. No one knows the answer to that question. Because <laughs> we're the dumbasses. Fernando? Anything? I wish I could do an impression, but I can't. No idea. No. Go ahead. Yes. I, yes, you do. No, I don't know. Uh, a war veteran. No, I don't. I, yeah. I don't know. I no, no, no. Is it, is it the is me. it the is it the dad from the Wonder Years? Because that show was bad, and anyone who liked it is wrong. <laughs> um. No. All right, we can leave that blank. But now, John, it is your chance uh, to see to if you can Mojo. guess what the Hastings. list. This is um, uh, top ten. Uh, top 10 uh, TV characters we were supposed to hate but we love. That's what I'm going to go with. That's what you're going with? That's right. I don't know if I can give you that. Oh, come on. You can, though. Look, I've swept so. it. Oh, what the heck? That's what this game should know. be called. Fernando, you want to stay in this game and try to see what, uh, guess what the list? For 10 points. <laughs> What do these ones have in common? Bathrobes. <laughs> <laughs> They're all racist. Okay, I, I, no. I, I'm going to go with Welcome to Watch Mojo. This is Fernando. And today we're presenting the top 10 grumpiest characters in television. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Oh, that's there we fun. go. We've got a game. I told you, Fernando. I told you. That's the list. All right. So All right. the score is gotta, now we gotta, we 12 gotta, to 20. We got ourselves a game. Still for John, but the clarinet? much, it, um, much the easier to come back now. Pardon me for yeah. swearing. From, what, uh, from SpongeBob? Is that who it is? Although he acts like he doesn't care, this underwater clarinet playing cashier once dressed as Santa Claus to cheer up his neighbors for Christmas. Squid that would be Squidward Tentacles from SpongeBob SquarePants. And then the other Dad from And the I believe the only other one we didn't get was number 1. In the 70s, this no-nonsense war veteran was miscast as Santa by his cheerful wife, who reminds him not to call any of the children dumbass. That is of course Red Foreman from that 70s show. So that's the end of the round. We've got a game now. I can't wait to see what happens in the lightning round. All right, we're ready for the lightning round. Fernando, because you are trailing in the score, that means you get to choose whether you go first and kind of set the pace, or if you want John to go first and then you know what you have to aim for if you want to stay in the game. So, first or second? You know what? I think I'm going to let John go first because I, I really want that last pressure to see where I, I have to get to. Thank but you, yes, dear. Let's do it. All righty. All right, so, Fernando, if you will please leave us, we will let you know when we would like you to come back. All righty. See you later. Yeah. Okay, cool. John. Yo. Are you ready? Sure. I'm going to read you. Okay. I'm going to read you the title and criteria of a Watch Mojo Top 10 list, and you are going to have 60 seconds on the clock to name as many entries on that list as you can. Great. Let's, let's do it. The list is Top 10 Greatest Christmas Characters of All Time. For this list, we'll be looking at our favorite classic holiday icons, both the nice and and the naughty. We'll only be covering fictional characters that originated from books, songs, and urban legends, so real figures like a certain birthday boy are ruled out. Go. Walt Griswold, um, uh, Kevin McAllister, uh, The Grinch, John McClane, McClane, uh, The Grinch's dog, Rudolph, that, um, oh, what the f***? El Will Ferrell's character Elf from the movie Elf, whose name I can never f remember. 
Um, Christmas characters. Uh, the kid from Christmas Story who's stupid and no one knows. He's a nerdy idiot, and that movie's bad. Um, uh, 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 Ebenezer Scrooge, of course. Bill Murray, Bill Murray's character from Scrooge. You didn't say G you said not Jesus, but I'm gonna go Jesus Christ. Um, the three wise men, um, Mary Magdalene, Santa Claus, you can't forget Santa Claus, Mrs. Claus, Tim Allen from the movie Santa Claus, Martin Short's Mr. Freezy Boy from the third Santa Claus, which I for some reason watched on an airplane, um, the kid from Miracle on 34th Street, the Wet Bandits. Time, time, time. All right, so by my count, we are giving John a generous five. All right, Fernando. I will let you know that John got five. Five out of? Ten. Ten. <laughs> it's a top ten. Uh. <laughs> Respectable, but not unbeatable. Okay. Are you ready? I'm going to give you the title and the criteria, and then you have 60 seconds on the clock to name as many entries on this list as possible. Okay. It is top ten greatest Christmas characters of all time. For this list, we'll be looking at our favorite classic holiday icons, both the nice and the naughty. We'll only be covering fictional characters that originated from books, songs, and urban legends, so real figures like a certain birthday boy are ruled out. Go. Rudolph. Oh, okay, Santa is ruled out. Uh, okay, Rudolph, uh, the Grinch, Scrooge. Um, uh, Frosty the Snowman, um, <laughs> how, how much time do I have? Um, 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 okay, um, hmm. oh, I cannot think of another Christmas character, come on, Fernando. Um, <laughs> Oh my god, stop it. Um Come on, come on. Okay, so we have a bit of a problem. Mm? I don't know why you ruled out Santa Claus. Because you said the birthday boy. Oh, that's Jesus. Okay. So, uh by my count if I'm being very generous, and it's Christmas, so I may as well be, I'm going to give you Santa, since you did, in fact, say Santa Claus, even though you tried to rule him out. Um, you both got like five, a, so we've I got a tie. I want to put the official record that I feel that Santa was uh, an inappropriate uh, title to give, and that I am being scrawled. Here's what I'm getting for Christmas. I'm getting a big lump of, uh, big lump of cheaters from the Watch Mojo squad. I'll also say that I didn't have to give you the elves because That's very true. I just said you Will did Ferrell not say that. Movies. You just said Will Ferrell from the elf movies. So hey. you're not exactly getting scrubbed. Hey, listen, you know, Bam. I didn't say I wasn't a hypocrite. Um, I could okay. drop. <laughs> Boom. Mic drop. Anyway, so the tiebreaker question, I am going to read you a question and I would like you guys to write down your answer and then uh, show it to the camera. Okay. So uh, here is the question. Do not say it out loud, just write it down. According to the website Santa Tracker, how many elves is Santa expected to have by Christmas 2020? To be clear, whoever is closest gets the points. Are you guys done? Yep. Okay, please show me your answers. No, just go for it. John's got 37. Fernando's got 10 million. I believe John takes this. The answer is 110,000. I'll just read you our top 10 list of the greatest Christmas characters of all time, just so you know who they are. Number 10, Jack Frost. Number nine, The Grinch. Number eight, Ebenezer Scrooge. Number seven, The Nutcracker. Number six, The Little Drummer Boy. Number five, Krampus. Number four, The Elves. Number three, Frosty the Snowman. Number two, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And number one, of course, is your friend and mine, Santa Claus. 
Santa Honorable Claus. mentions go to Sugar Plum Fairy, Dominic the Donkey, whoever that is, and Noel Baba. Noel Baba? It's Baba Yaga's cousin. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, sorry, do you, did you say elves? I did. So, like, elves just count as one character. I would have given you that. Damn it. And then you would have won the game. But unfortunately, by a score of 30 to 12, John is now a two-time winner of What the List. What do you mean, unfortunately? How <laughs> no, dare unfortunately you? For <laughs> unfortunately, what the heck is this? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, the oh, Christmas no, spirit. Oh, oh Oh, old Hastings donating his time peacefully to this uh, this company in a time when he's uh, when he's out of work. Unfortunately, he'll be back again. Glad to see I know what side the toast is buttered on over to watch Mojo. Hmm. Just because you won, John, doesn't mean you're getting off scot free. You do have two Go strikes ahead. to Fernando's one strike. So I was thinking, instead of an embarrassing story, you can actually reveal, if you like, a uh, a fun. Christmas memory, or the best gift you've ever received, or the funniest gift you've ever received, whatever you'd like. I mean, I have the best gift I ever, I think the funniest gift I ever received um, uh, was I got from a management company. Uh, I got, um, they gave every comedian that was under their representation notebooks. And they gave me one, and my name was misspelled in it. Bear in mind, this is the person that was supposed to be representing me in my career. My name was misspelled in it, and I uh, we since we fi uh, I then fired them over other things because uh, they just didn't do a very good job. And when they were actually really upset in the meeting, when I said you're fired, and they went why, and I listed all my grievances, and then ended it with, and the notebook you gave me for Christmas, you gave you put the wrong name on it, and I've never won an argument more soundly in my life where they literally went from like yeah, but and then they were like, uh yeah, all right, yep, yeah, we see, yep. Yeah, Good, 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 good. Uh, and then I have since told that story to uh, anyone and everyone who asks me uh, who that company is within stand-up comedy. So if you become a stand-up comedian and maybe sign with that agency, I will reveal who they are if you live in Britain. Mm. That's a fun tease for you out there. Well, I'll keep that in mind if I ever start my British stand-up career. Indeed. However, you will not see John again next time because you will be seeing yours truly up against Stephanie, who has won the most games of What the List. And we will be competing. Can I face yes, you can say something. What is up? Can I face the winner of, uh, of that next match? Uh, sure. There we go. Yeah, little tease there. You know what I mean? Keep everybody watching. It's going to be an interesting January. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys for playing. I hope you had fun. And thank you guys for watching What The List. We will see you next time. But if you want to compete on What The List, be sure to email us a video explaining to us why you would be a good contestant to WTL at watchmojo.com. See ya. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Ho, ho, ho.